All right, you guys ready for video number four in our complex ion series? Getting some crazy chemistry going on here. All right, so in the last video, we looked at acid base reactions of complex ions and could they be destroyed. We're going to apply the same tricks and same concepts to this one. All right, we're going to be looking at what's our starting species. We got that equilibrium for equation one. Look at the, um, the species, the complex ion and stuff in equilibrium. Uh, what are we adding to it? Look at the combinations. So I'm just going to do a simplified uh, qualitative start with this. We're not going to do any uh, calculations just to see what's going on. And then we'll do a couple problems like we did that were pretty comprehensive calculating K overalls and all that fun stuff. And is it bigger than one or smaller than one? So we're going to look at complex ions and solids or precipitates. So in, for example, if we start with a solid, could we dissolve that solid using a complex ion for, to, in, to form a complex ion, right? So if the complex ion is more favorable than the solid, the solid will dissolve to form the complex ion, right? Depends on the overall K value. We all have to add the equations together and whatnot. But let's just look at it overall. There's two possibilities, right? And we're talking about can we dissolve a solid by adding excess of the same ligand? So you look at the anion in the solid, and then if we added excess of that anion, can that function as a ligand and have the solid go away in lieu of forming a complex ion? So you have to look at some combinations. We're limited by the KF and KSP tables that I give you, which are not comprehensive, but we're limited to those on exams. So here's two scenarios. Here's what we're going to look at. In scenario number one, right, we've got some lead two chloride solid. In in uh, in number two or number or in B, we got magnesium hydroxide solid. In this one, in the lead two chloride, chloride is the anion. So if we add extra chloride, could we form a complex ion and dissolve the solid? Remember, to form a complex ion, you need pretty high concentrations, four, five, six molar. Uh, you know, it's variable, but we'll just kind of use four to six molar as the guideline. If you see that, that means we could could potentially form them. But can the complex ion form, right? Some metal ions, many, cannot form the complex ions. They have to have a place for the lone pairs of the ligands to go into, right? Then we can take a look at the magnesium hydroxide. Hydroxide ion is the anion in the solid. If we add excess hydroxide ion, can that hydroxide ion function as a ligand and dissolve that solid to form the complex ion, right? Of course, we're talking like four molar sodium hydroxide in this case for part A, maybe, you know, five molar hydrochloric acid, something like that, right? Which we can make a problem. So let's take a look at our tables here. Now, we haven't brought up, we haven't done uh, chapter 18 for us on solids, but there is a KSP table. It's pretty cluttered. So I have a whole bunch of KSP values. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but you can find them on there if you need to. So for like lead to chloride, if we look up lead, I don't even know if that's on here. Yeah, there it is. So lead to chloride is way down here. Lead to chloride is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 5, I think. Yep. 1.6 times 10 to minus 5. And then magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium's up here. I'm trying to read this upside down. A lot of people pick manganese. Here's magnesium hydroxide right there. Magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide is 1.8 times 10 to minus 11. All right? So that gives you a rough, and we'll talk about what those numbers mean in another chapter. But those are, you know, viable solids. Let's see if we could form a complex ion with the lead and the chloride. So let's get our KF table. Let's look up the lead possibilities. So we got some lead here, right? So we got the lead with the hydroxide, lead with the oxalate, the thiosulfate, right? Oh, look at that. You see that? PBCl3, we got the trichloroplumate 2 ion. Right, with a KF value of 2.4 times 10 to the 1. So yes, that is possible. It's possible if we have excess chloride. So we could get PbCl3 to the negative 1. Right? And this will be if K is greater than 1. 
that would be if k is greater than 1 for that process. We're not going to calculate that. I just want to show you how to look that up. So it's possible, right? Adding excess of the same ligand. We can do the same with silver chloride, I think. We can do it for a lot of hydroxide precipitates. Uh, if those metal ions can form complex ions, you'll see them on that KF table. Quite a few of them can do that. But the magnesium one, if you look on here, magnesium's not even on here. It doesn't have anywhere for the ligands to go. Nowhere for the lone pairs on the ligands to go. So there is no magnesium on here, right? You don't see it anywhere, right? So magnesium is not going to be able to do it. So we're just going to go to big bone, or you can go no reaction. Right? That cannot happen because that cannot, so there's no complex ion can form with the magnesium ion. So you just look at your tables and look at the possibilities to see. And if it can go, then we can do what we did before and actually calculate the overall K value. Let's look at a different aspect where instead of adding the same, uh, if the anion of the solid, right, adding that as an excess ligand, let's say we have a solid, but we add a completely different species that can displace the anion of the solid out. Oh, now we'll look at that and we'll actually do some mathematics with that one. Be right back. All right, put your thinking caps on, gang. We're going to do what we did on the last video with acid-base reactions. Same thinking process. It's exact. Once you get the thinking process down, I can give you an infinite number of combinations of these involving weak acids, weak bases, complex ions, and solids. Right? All the different combinations you can think of, but it's the exact same thinking process. What's your starting equilibrium? What species do you have? What's the starting equilibrium? What species are you adding to that equilibrium? And look at the four possible combinations. Could you form a solid? Could you form a complex ion? Could you have a neutralization reaction? All right? Look at those things. All right, here we go. Can lead to bromide solid, PDBr2 solid, be dissolved by adding six molar sodium hydroxide solution? So a key here is the six molar. It's a pretty high concentration, which means complex ions are viable, right? Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it, if it can happen, it will. That's a high enough concentration. All right. Let's start with the equilibrium of our species, right? So the species in question is the solid. So let's call this equation one. Let's bring that down. So I'm gonna take my solid, and that is going to be in equilibrium with its ions. See that? So we looked at that when, we, uh, when I introed all the different types of equilibria. So a solid just exists in equilibrium with its cation and anion, right? And that'll have some Ksp value. So let's say K1. And that's a solid dissolving, so that is Ksp for solubility products. So K1 is equal to Ksp in that scenario. And we can look that value up on the uh, KSP table. All right, what are we adding to this species? We are adding sodium hydroxide. So that is strong. All right, sodium hydroxide, any alkali metal hydroxide strong. So that's going to exist as the sodium ion and the hydroxide ion, six molar of each, right? Let's look at the possible combinations. Remember, you always get four possible. Hi, kitty kitties. Oh, I always have kitty sitting here right by my lap so I can pet him the whole time I'm doing videos. <laughs> All right, four possible combinations. There's combination number one between the sodium ion from the base we added and the lead 2 ion in equilibrium with the solid. Do you think those are going to react? A sodium cation with a lead 2 cation? Nah, they're going to be like, no get away from me we're both positive so I'm gonna say that's uh, that's not gonna happen so let's put a big big X through that possibility how about the two anions I think the hydroxide ion from the sodium hydroxide and the bromide ion from the solid equilibrium they're both anions Ooh, they keep it away from each other so let's call that combination number two I'm gonna ixnay that one you can usually eliminate two of the four possible combinations pretty fast because of repulsive electrostatic, uh, uh, you know, electrostatic repulsions. I almost said attractions there. Let's look at this combination here. 
How about the sodium ion from the base that we added with the bromide ion? Okay, we have to look at two things, possible precipitate, possible complex ion. All right, well, we know, could that form a precipitate? We know sodium salts don't form precipitate, so we can eliminate precipitation as a viable uh, outcome. Could the sodium and the bromide form a complex ion? Turns out alkali metals can't form complex ions. You could look on the KF table, you're not going to find it. Sodium does diddly squat. So sodium bromide will not form a precipitate. Sodium and bromide will not form a complex ion. So we're gone. Plus the bromide in equilibrium with the PBBr2 is probably lower than 4 molar. So I, it's not a viable combination. So we can eliminate the sodium with the bromide. That leaves only one possibility, which is the hydroxide ion from the added sodium hydroxide reacting with the lead 2 ion that's in equilibria with our solid. So let's take a look at these combinations. Could we form a precipitate between the lead 2 and the hydroxide? Yes. But look at the concentration. You see the 6 molar? That means the complex ion. Only in low concentrations are you going to form the, the precipitate. But this is over 6 molar. So we can definitely, if the lead 2 and the hydroxide can form a complex ion, let's take a look at our KF table and see if the lead and the hydroxide, let's see, lead and hydro, oh, do you see it? Do you see it? You see the lead, if we have three hydroxides, four molar or higher, that can form a complex ion with a KF of 3.8 times 10 to the 14th. So that can happen because we've got a high enough concentration. So yes, this can happen in equation two. Write the equation for me of the lead ion and the hydroxide ion forming the complex ion. Do that for me real quick. All right, let's see if you got what I got, right? Look on the KF table and see what the complex ion forms between the lead and the hydroxide. We looked it up, right? So that lead 2 ion can react with three hydroxides to form. And remember, if you look on here again, look for the lead. Where did the lead hydroxide go? That's, yep, right there. You see it? See the lead with the three hydroxides? Now you could probably figure out the charge yourself or you could just look it up on the table. I'd be much more impressed if you just figured it out on your own, right? The lead's a plus two and there's three OH minuses. So two minus three will be minus one. So this will pick up three of those for a minus one charge. So the tetrahydroxo, it's a negative. So we're gonna add the eight tetrahydroxo and it has a Latin root. We can't say leadate. We have to say plumate. Tetrahydrox, not tetra, tri. <laughs> four, nine, it's three, not four. All right? So trihydroxo plumate two ion because the lead's a plus two. All right. So here we go. So what would the K value for that be? Let's see. So K2. That is the formation of a precipitate, so that's the opposite of a precipitate dissolving. So that would be, oh, no, that's not a precipitate, that's a complex ion. I'm on, I'm on a roll today, right? So we're forming a complex ion. I was, there's no solid. You see a, do you see an S in there anywhere? There's no S in there. So that's the formation of a complex ion. So that's just the straight up KF. It's not reversed, yeah, anything like that. And let's add these two equations together. Let's get our overall equation. Take, what do they have in common? They have the lead ion in common. Is that correct? So we want to eliminate that. There's one lead 2 ion here. There's one lead 2 ion here. One on the right in the first equation, one on the left in the second. They're going to cancel out. I don't have to multiply. This is easier than what we did before. I don't have to multiply anything by any value. It's just straight up. So I'm going to add those together. These are going to cancel. I'm going to get the lead 2 bromide solid. And that goes away with the three hydroxides. And then that's gone. I'm going to get the complex ion. 
the trihydroxo, plumate 2, and then we got the two bromides there. Woo! That's pretty crazy. All right, so the lead 2 ions cancel out. Now, I want you to calculate the overall K value and tell me whether that's bigger than 1 or less than 1. And if it's greater than 1, then this will happen. All right, if it's greater than 1, then adding the, uh, the excess uh, strong acid, the high concentration, will dissolve the precipitate in favor of the complex I formation. If it's a lot less than 1, then it's not. It's going to stay as the solid. So calculate that for me real quick. Let's see if we get the same thing. Let's get it. All right. So overall K, just like we did before, we're adding two equations together. So it's going to be K1 times K2. What's K1? That is the KSP of the solid, the lead to bromide. What's K2? That's the formation of that complex ion. So that's my KF. Let's plug those values in. So let's look up the KSP value for lead to bromide. So get out that scary, scary KF value, right? You can print from my website. Let's look for lead, 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 lead. Dun, 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 dun. Here it is right here. Whoa, that's hard to see, man. That's small font. So do you see the PBBR2 there, lead to bromide? 4.0 times 10 to the minus 5. Lead to bromide, 4.0 times 10 to the minus 5. 4.0 times 10 to the minus 5. That is your KSP, right? And it's dissolving, so it's not backwards, so I don't have to inverse it. I didn't multiply it by anything, so I don't have to square it or cube it. It's just straight up. These are easy, right? K2 will be the KF, the formation constant of the trihydroxo plumate 2 ion. So let's find that. So get your KF table, right? And find your lead with your three hydroxides there. So that is a 3.8 times 10 to the 14th. You see that? So there's the trihydroxo plumate 2 ion, 3.8 times 10 to the 14th. So let's write 3.8. Times 10 to the 14th. Okay. Two significant digits. Two significant digits. What do you guys get? What do you guys get? I get 1.520. Time. That's going to be you know, 14, 14 minus 5. So, right? So you should be able to get a rough idea of what you're going to get there. To the 10th. Well, that's going to be around to the ninth, 10th range, something like that, if you take those. Right? You're just adding those exponents together to give a rough idea. That's going to be a lot bigger than 1, right? So 1.520 times 10 to the 10th. That does not round up, so it stays as 1.5. 1.5 times 10 to the 10th. That is our overall K value. I think we would all agree that that's a lot bigger than 1. So that is product favored, highly product favored, right? Pretty much 10 to the 10th or higher is going to go completely to products. And so I would say, yes, that solid, the lead to bromide solid, could be dissolved by adding the 6 molar sodium hydroxide in favor of forming that complex ion. That complex ion is more favorable. The hydroxide ions would rather be as the complex ion under those high concentrations than it would be as the, the size. So the, the lead, the, not the lead, the bromide gets displaced. Do you see that? So the solid originally had the bromide ions. The hydroxide ions displace and kick them out. They spit them out at the end. And so that lead would rather be with the hydroxides as a complex ion than with the bromides as a solid. That's how you figure those out, right? So same concepts. We'll do another video looking at situations where you know, do you get a complex ion versus a precipitate? Those kinds of things. We'll do a few more of these. We, we're going to do a lot of these. I'm going to do three videos of this because th we're going to do a whole lab on this. I want you to be really good at these tricks. Let's get ready for the next video.